So today I'm going to talk about, if this thing will work for me, anti-aging and bioidentical hormones. One of my favorite subjects because although I'm 16 years old, people tell me I'm aging. I don't really believe them, but I like to study myself and that's how I've designed and come up with programs to help other people. It's through my own research on my own body. And many of you sitting here I know are very healthy people and have spent their entire lives looking into who they are in terms of being really healthy on all levels. That doesn't just mean our body, obviously, because we have to be healthy in our emotions. So I'm going to get into some of the more outer things in terms of how do we feel in life? What is it that makes us feel old? What is anti-aging medicine? A lot of doctors don't know that term, or if they did hear it, they would scoff at it because they say there is no such thing. We find differently. We find that there is anti-aging medicine. I call it age management medicine. What I mean by age management medicine is the fact that we now have enough science, and this area of science is growing logarithmically every day. There are studies that are produced every day on what the different hormones are doing to us, what our nutrition does to us, and how we can actually live longer. I'm still not of the uh, idea that we can actually save everyone's life in terms of making them live a lot longer, but we do know that people that have type 2 diabetes, and there's some of you in this room, can add 78 years of their life by following some of the programs that you hear about today. I think that's a pretty good deal. And the part about it that's best is you actually save money when you're doing it because you cut down a lot of junk food. It's all about nutrition. Americans are living longer but not necessarily healthier. What does that mean? We're getting older. You know, the population's getting older. The baby boomers are moving forward now. And we are not going to age. We're going to be doing athletics till the day we die. We're going to keep active. People are getting new degrees all the time. People keep going on just like when they were kids these days. When I think about when my dad was growing up, who was born in 1906, people were old by 50, very old. They were dying by 60. What's going on now? People are, what, 80 and looking like they're 60? We have people in my clinic every day that come in, some in their 90s who look wonderful, they're still exercising, they're still following good nutritional practices, things that keep us healthy. So not necessarily healthier is what you do with it. You can make yourself healthy if you want to do that. It's very simple. You just have to keep a focus and a discipline going. So age management medicine, which is what I practice, is based on the concept that there is sufficient medical evidence. So I don't make this stuff up. I do read the studies, and it's unfortunate that most doctors don't read the studies about this because it's not taught in medical school very much. I teach it at UCLA, where I'm an assistant clinical professor of medicine, and everyone in the class, they're young doctors, residents, love this because they don't get it anywhere else. It's not really taught. Traditional medicine is really the medicine that is taught for hospitals, for people that are in acute care intensive care units, and that's 98% of medical training traditionally, okay? That means the other 2% is for people like you, people like me. How much training is that? The 2% of 100% is not very much. So the rest of us docs that want to go outside the box have to study on our own. A lot of societies that will train us to do this. So what we're doing is we're preserving ourselves from the onset of disease. It all comes back to that. We want to keep the immune system as strong as we can. Optimum nutrition is the core of everything that I teach, everything that I do, everything I do in my life too. I never ask a patient to do something that I don't do. I've been through it. I have the same addictions everyone else does, probably more. A very addictive personality. Anita, the psychotherapist, is laughing at me. But it is true. We all have addictions, and that's you know the lower center of ourself that runs our life for us, that keeps us alive, that keeps us procreating and all those things, does not want to conform to what's good for us necessarily. So the appropriate nutrients, we'll get into what that means. Physical exercise, how many people in the room do that? Raise your hands. Excellent. We've got a great group here. What it does is 
it helps lower the insulin in our body when we do exercise. We raise up our adrenaline to give us the energy. Adrenaline is a stress hormone that we need to do exercise. But when adrenaline is up, insulin goes down. And that's what we want. We want to keep our bodies in a very low state of insulin. It's one of the great keys to health, always has been. So we use resistance training and strength training. We do stretching whenever we can. But then we need to do the cardiovascular training also. Now what does this do? I have this word on the bottom, I hope I spelled it right, carburetors. We have things in our cells that are called mitochondria. Anyone ever hear what that means? I think of them as carburetors because when we exercise, we actually generate new mitochondria in our cells. The mitochondria produce, if you remember this from chemistry, ATP. That is our energy source. If we're not exercising, these mitochondria die off. We don't have good energy sources. A lot of people that have fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, often just have mitochondria imbalance where they're not functional very well. Stress control, how do we do that? Do people here meditate? Do they do any breathing exercises? I see a lot of shaking heads, that's great. Yoga, therapy, positive social contact, healthy relationships. What does that mean? We all have to be working on ourselves in many different levels in order to get our system tuned up because we are multidimensional. We're not just a body hooked up to a mind. There are spiritual aspects to us that seem to run us when we're asleep, right? How do we keep breathing? Anyone just keep breathing because they want to? Anyone ever try to stop breathing? You can't. There are other forces working in us. We want continuous brain stimulation. Taking, you know, for retired, take classes at UCLA in, you know, the evenings. Do something. Do something to keep yourself moving. Keep that mind active. Now, as part of my Life Force program, which is a very complete program that some of you have done, we do a cognitive screening on the computer. What does this do? It tests us for how our memory is doing. It tests us for our attention span. It, ten it, it tests us for how we can adapt and learn. All right? Now, a lot of people don't do very well on that test. Very high executive functional people sometimes don't do very well. Does that mean their brain isn't working? No, the brain is working, but it's like a car that has eight cylinders and they're using four of them. So we can tune up the brain. In one way, I see people doing these different crossword puzzles and other things like that. The computer has, the internet has many, many games you can use to keep your brain sharp. Now, when I personally took that test, I was very frustrated because I didn't do very well on it. I hadn't been in school for many years and I was used to using calculators and computers to do my work for me. So when I took it, I was like inside thinking, this is really hard, and I don't want to have to do this test well because it kind of hurts my brain to do it. Had I been in school, it would have been a breeze. And I think most of us fit into that category. We don't do enough with our brains, really. I think stress control is one of the greatest things we can do. If we can bring ourselves to neutrality, I don't care what you call it. Some people call it spirit. Some people have a religious focus. I really don't care how people do it or what they call it. The names don't matter. But to spend time alone every day, I don't care if it's five minutes, I don't care if it's one minute, just take the time, get alone somewhere where the phone's not ringing, lie down if you need to do that, get a focus, and basically it's a process of loving ourselves. When we do that, we can love other people. And that's something we teach also. I always ask patients when they come in, do you love yourself? And they go, yeah. And I go, how do you do it? And they go, I don't know. And I go, do you love yourself? And they go, no, I guess I don't, because it is a process. It's not something that people just gestalt. It's not something we're born with, or maybe actually we are born with it, but we lose it at some point, and then it's a process we all can gain again by doing certain exercises and techniques. So the question is, is the jury still out on whether or not we can increase life expectancy or lifespan? The jury's coming in that we can't actually do that. We're getting several studies now. There were animal model studies with mice and rats years ago where they extended life by about a third by calorie deprivation. Okay? Now I see studies at UCLA where they're putting people on 800 calorie a day diets to get rid of diabetes and cancer. I wouldn't like to be on an 800 calorie a day diet. I don't think anyone here would. That's pretty deprivational to me. 